Hello and welcome to this video where we're going to take a look at PowerShop 2 which is included with Cubase 10.5. So this amalgamates PowerShop which has been included with Cubase for a while and PowerShop Pro so it gives some uh, more features and some new uh, preset sounds etc but there are quite a few new features now certainly PowerShop isn't a synth which I've used a great deal in the past but I think now it's become much more usable and certainly something you can experiment with however it has a huge number of features as you can see on screen there's a whole load of controls uh, we've got two layers a and b so b isn't used in this one but a and b are pretty much the same but also there is a new uh, arpeggiator stroke sequencer etc in here well a sequencer really uh, which is taken from retrolog as well and there's also uh, effects which you can make use of as well so by necessity this is going to be more of a scoot across the surface a look at those those features rather than something in depth now i'm planning on doing a more in-depth series on patch up 2 uh, in the coming months but it takes quite a long time to do these kind of things and I'm currently uh, very busy with work and also busy working on a new couple of books which I'm writing. So uh, it will happen when I have time and hopefully that will not be uh, before the heat death of the universe. Anyway, uh, let's just dive in and take a look at some of the highlights. So obviously you've got uh, layers A and B in here. At the moment I've just got the initial preset uh, set up which is incredibly uninspiring. So yeah, it's just really playing a simple sine wave. So we're going to look at something a little more interesting uh, in a moment. Just going to pick up a preset from the list here. So now you may find, uh, depending on the situation, that yeah, patch up one and patch up two's uh, presets are not compatible with each other. So uh, certainly on some of my systems, as I've been using this, I've had two versions of each preset, but that appears not to be the case here. So here's uh, a more typical power chop kind of sound. So I'm finding it pretty useful for the kind of um, sound design or, you know, futuristic sounds uh, that a lot of synths can't do. So this is partly a function of the amount of modulation it's got available, but also because the oscillator now, there's actually two uh, oscillators in this version of Patch Up, which is much more interesting than the previous one, uh, where you only had only the one mode. So now you can switch between the two, and you can do it with a preset. So if you want to experiment with it, my if you, you just want to get some basics and play around, I would encourage you to just change the mode, because with no other changes... You can get a whole new sound. Now, obviously, your mileage varies considerably depending on what the, the waveform is that, that you've got in any given preset. But certainly while I've been um, learning my way around Patch Up 2, I've found that changing that can come up with some really interesting sounds. And as I say, in the future, we will hopefully get a chance to go through together all of the, the features that are available. But there's definitely not time for that because I think it would run into um, over an hour of, of going through this. And then you would still be kind of scratching the surface because there's there's just so much to it and so much to learn the fortunate side of things as we'll see is quite a lot of this common to other steinberg instruments so they've effectively used the sequencer from another synth and then put that in here so some of the controls will seem familiar if you've uh, looked through the sections on um Halley and sonic in the book uh, complete guide to music technology you'll know certainly some of the controls look fairly familiar etc just using that, we can look at some of the features that are on here. So the first thing is that uh, modulation is much easier to apply. So it's it's a kind of a drag and drop thing. So we have this modulation matrix down the bottom, which is sometimes a little bit intimidating for a lot of people. So in the case of this particular preset, we've got one, two, three, four on each one. And then we, so we've got a total of 10 different uh, bits of modulation that are happening, which is one of the contributors to why this is a complex and developing sound and why patch up is so powerful. And picking that from here, you can obviously, I say obviously, but you can pick your source from here. So you've got all these and then the offset to it. 
the modifier that's uh, being applied to it and then the depth and the destination. But as is common with a lot of synths uh, from many years is you can just uh, drag things about. So let's just, as a, an example, drag LFO1 to affect the amplifier and you literally just click this and then drag it to any of these controls. So you can just drag it to uh, the amplifier level and we see LFO1 has been set to affect volume one there. And it's it's as easy as that. So any section where you see this, you can drag that to any control. So here we could drag this to any of the controls and it makes it much easier to, particularly because you don't have to look through a list, but it's much easier just to go, right, yeah, that's going to affect that. And there we go. You can see spectral number is already in there. Um, it's very easy to, to get lost with these kind of things. So obviously there's a reason why you have the ability to point at things. And sometimes that's the appropriate solution. So this is going to make it much easier to modify this and say, hopefully we will cover this in some depth. Uh, later on something else which i find nice now is we'll just go back to the initial preset for this is you can drag and drop samples so make sure you've imported them into cubase first but in much the same way with groove agent once it's on your project window you can just drag it in we see here there it is so now on that init setting it won't play that particularly well like that but if we change to so now that's being played through. Obviously, I deliberately picked a guitar rather than, you know, something more more typical you'd expect. But you can use that as a learning tool. So the initial preset is useful because we haven't got 3,000 different modulations and a sequencer happening to confuse you about what's going on. So, for instance, here, if we put the speed up to about 100%, give or take. So now you can see that this section is working much more in the way you'd expect. And then that's that's my tip for this, is if you want to use this mode, set the speed to something sane, because obviously when it's at zero, it's like nothing's happening. And I think the problem with a lot of these things is people just walk away from it because you go, well, I've tried something. It's not making any sound. I don't know what to do. I'm going to go and do something else, because this seems to be a common theme. So this is definitely why a lot of people miss out on things that Groove Agent does. And what you should have is the default being 100%, because then at least you get some sound out. I think, okay, that sounds horrific, but what can I do with it? And then you can start playing around with all these other controls here, the randomness, etc. And now you can see that's not just progressing in a normal way, uh, and so on. So there's, there's a great deal to do. And now instantly we've got something which is that guitar, but sounds much more like an explosion, and so on. So there's a lot of experimentation and a lot of learning today before you can get a reasonable sound out of pad shop in the same way probably when you first started learning with uh, subtractor synthesizers. Initially it was all confusing and then some of it makes sense after a while. And the main thing with this is the uh, modulation but also the oscillator effectively because you've got these two modes and this one makes a lot more sense because it works with default, same defaults say so have a play with that put some samples in and see how you get on now i've made mention of this a few times so it's kind of called arpeggio sequencer etc but it can be uh, really useful so i'm just going to stick back onto a a lead sound at the moment so we've got this sorted by category so let's just find uh, i should learn my alphabet really but synth lead so, for instance, Sign Magic makes use of this. So, so we've got this uh, effectively arpeggio sequencer. Depends on how you want to approach it, but you can you can use this on on any sound. Now, this one has a, a preset which is, or a phrase rather, which is part of the preset. But there is a library of them available here, which you can play around with, which makes it. You know, you've got all sorts. I think number 40 is like a sort of trancey. So again, with a quick bit of experimentation, you can take a sound, you think, oh, I sound, the, you know, I like the sound of that. And then just, just effectively just come into the uh, arpeggiator uh, stroke sequencer page, turning that on and then playing around with it. You can instantly get something worthwhile and you can use these modulation sources as well. So you can then route these to 
other parts of the synth. Uh, there is an immense amount that you can do with this. It's hugely powerful, but the problem is it's slightly daunting and a bit unfriendly. It's also possible to copy between layers. So here we could copy layer A or we can copy layer B. So remember, if you if you hear one sound you like the sound of, but you want to uh, add them together, often they will only use a single layer uh, and you can copy them. So let's say here we're going to copy layer A and then we can load up something else. So for instance, there's pour swipe and then we can paste that into B. So now we've got our original one so we have our sine one and pull swipe both on the same one and then we can change the balance here so here you've got the mix control so etc so it's it's pretty powerful but there are literally hundreds of controls to go over just going to go through a few presets which have caught my attention while i've been uh listening to this and playing around with it so vocal gates a bit of that uh, old cool, old school uh, trance vibe on the same theme. Transmutation. And again, in this case, not making use of arpeggiators. So you could uh, indeed make use of that. Grain machinery. Sounds like an interstitial from, you know, an early hybrid album, etc. That kind of thing. Flies on ice. Again, sort of quite out there, sound design kind of thing. Fauna. Triple pulse pad. Now showing that it can just make fairly straightforward synth sounds as well, but obviously then you've got all the uh, modulation options that you can you can take advantage of. So that's been just a brief overview of Pad Shop 2, which is included with Cubase 10.5. As I say, hopefully there will be an upcoming series on it uh, when time allows. Uh, but I hope you found this video useful, and if you have, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you soon.